Hey guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And tonight, and I say tonight because it's around 7 o'clock, I'm going to answer a couple of emails and there's just no way I can email you guys back and explain to you where these springs go that's inside this rear end and how you adjust them. Uh, I tried to explain it to... What was this? Freeman. It seems like all you guys are down south. Nobody's in the Midwest. I mean, don't they have grass out there? I don't know. Maybe the cows eat it all. I don't know. But um, I've had another email come in on this guy bought a used snapper and he said it's in bad shape. I've been working on it. He said there's two springs in the rear end. One is broke. And one is disconnected, and he doesn't know where it goes. Well, we're going to show you. And the spring that you mentioned that's broken looks like this. And what this does, it's probably one of them pain in the butt parts that you don't really need. So what I would tell you is hook the rest of it up. And see if it runs without this. Because I'm pretty sure what this spring does, it's part of the reverse assembly. So when you're backing up your snapper and you push the clutch in a little bit so you can straighten out your trailer if you're backing a trailer up. Or if you want to slow down a little, as soon as you touch your clutch, this stupid thing pops into neutral. And then you got to try to get it in reverse again. Well... That's part of the mechanism that goes in there that hooks up to the reverse. And I'm thinking that's all that spring is for. If that's the case, you don't need it, believe me. This spring is the heart of the snapper. Without this, pulling the chain case into your drive disc, your snapper is not going to go anywhere. If it's slipping when your bag is full or when you're going uphill, you need to adjust this. Now, you can kind of see it in here, but it's really hard. So I, I dug through my scrap box and I dug out a yoke assembly with the bracket on it. Now, this bracket goes up and through this hole, it bolts into that little plastic block that slides up and down on that rail. Now where this spring goes that fell out on you, it hooks into the side of the chain, of oh, chain case. <laughs> it hooks into the side of the yoke. Now this funny bent end goes into these two holes down here. It just slides in and pulls up. I hope you can see that. I got it bent upward. It goes into one of these holes. Now, Freeman, to adjust your spring, I've talked to him. I just called him on the phone. Uh, he's probably, I'm in Michigan. He's in Virginia. I call all over the country helping people. Now, the last guy I helped, the farthest away that I helped was a man in South Africa. No, I didn't call him. I don't know. <laughs> I can't call South Africa for free, I don't think. But anyway, this is a spring that pulls your clutch disc into your drive disc. Without this, you're not going to get the traction you need. So Freeman, these two holes in the bottom, that's the two I was talking about. You want to put your spring in that bottom hole. That's going to give you the most torque. Now the top of the spring, you got this arm here. The top of the spring hooks into one of these holes. I'm going to put it in the top hole. You can see there's three holes there. That's going to give you the most leverage pulling your chain case into your drive disc. That's what you want. Now on this other little spring that you said was broke, this is one of the rods that goes up, this rod goes up into a pipe that goes to your shifting mechanism. 
and this is what shoves it into reverse. Now this spring, if you buy a new one, <clears throat> this is your rod. It's got a spot on the, on the edge here that they pinched and made a raised area. You slide that spring over top of that, the bottom. And then you swing it and snap it onto that rod and it stays there. Now this assembly goes in this little, I don't know if you can see this key shaped hole. Let me get something behind it. There's a hole with a little key shape on the bottom. Now this rod goes in that hole. Let me get this out of the way. Unhook this spring. This rod goes in this hole. First thing you want to do is take the spring and hook it over the top of the yoke frame. Slide the rod in the hole, if I can see it, and then just flip it up. And that's how, that's your spring tension. It's pushing downward. Then you just put this assembly in there, slide this rod up inside this pipe, and put it back together. That's all you got to do. Now, if this thing is slipping on you, you, you want to tighten that spring up. I've had a lot of people say, and mine just slipped a lot on me. I bolted mine solid. And this is one that's bolted solid. I patterned this after a uh, 63 Comet. Uh, a friend of mine at work found out that it was actually the owner of the shop I work at. Found out I blew up my engine and I was working on my old snapper. And he says, I've got an old Comet that sits out behind my garage that I never use. You can have it. Come over and get it. So I went over there and got it. And I looked at his clutch assembly. And back then, all they used was a solid piece of steel. And your clutch disc went on and it, three bolts went through. That's why these clutches all have these holes in them. These three bolts go through and just bolt it solid. So that's kind of why I came up with the idea of just bolting these solid and be done with that slip thing they got on there. But you do have to be careful because when you let that clutch out, this baby's gone. I mean, it pops wheelies and yeah, it's, it's you've got kids that's going to be mowing the yard. You might not want to do that because yeah, it's going to come up. <laughs> I could tell you a story about mine that threw me off my, my snapper because uh, the bags were full. I was going up a hill and I slowed down to, to look at something that was on the ground and to quickly decide if I wanted to suck it up or go around it. And when I let the clutch back out, the front end came up. Well, because I was on a hill and the bags were full, it came up until the bags hit the ground. Now my my bagger doesn't slide in. I have the dome top, which comes up about the middle of your back. So when this thing came up, I rolled right off of the machine, and the next thing I knew, I'm sitting on the ground, watching the snapper go across the yard on the back two tires. So I ran over and pushed it down, and yeah, it, it was kind of comical. Dang, I wish I would have had the camera going on that one. Now another question he's got is on this spring up here. He said he's having trouble um, getting this shifter to move. I've had a couple of them where they're froze solid, just like yours. Let me move this this thing and move this camera so I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, to get this thing unassembled, it's not easy. That is one heck of a spring in there. What happens is inside of here, let me grab a pointer. Inside this spring is a tube, or a piece of pipe that's welded to this and the spring slides over it. This shifter is on a steel rod that goes through this tube 
it comes out over here and this bracket that this linkage is hooked to, sorry about kicking the camera, that's welded to this rod. Now what happens is there's a grease fitting on here that most people don't know. If you don't grease that, these two will rust together. So you got to get them apart. Now the best way I found is I get a big pair of channel locks. I put the bottom inside of the hole where the shifter comes down and grab this metal plate with the other side and just squeeze it. It's not easy. First you want to take the cotter key out of this pin. When you squeeze this, you'll relieve the spring pressure on this pin, even though you're compressing this spring. The pin can drop out, then your shifter will come off. Release your pliers, and this whole assembly will come out in this direction. Then what I've done is I, I bought a small uh, stone for honing brake calipers. Let me grab it. Okay, this one has two stones on it. It's just a little spring-loaded thing. If you can find a three stone that's small enough to go inside that pipe, that would probably work better. But this is for uh, honing out your brake cylinder inside your wheels. Uh, most cars don't have shoe brakes anymore. This is uh, kind of old school. But it works very well to go inside that pipe and get all that rust out of it. Once you get the steel rod out, that this shaft is welded to and the grease fitting, I'd replace that grease fitting. Then I take that over on a wire wheel and I shine it up the best I can and get all the rust off it and you're not going to get the pitting off if it's all pitted. That ain't going to work. Slide it all back together. Be careful when you're compressing that spring and uh, just keep that greased and you won't have that problem locking up on you anymore. Okay, we're back. I had somebody at the door picking up some parts. Um, I've got an email here from one of the guys I've been shooting back and forth with uh, trying to fix his snapper. And I'd like to read a little bit of it to you if I can. It says, Jim, thank you. You are rare encounter in what you do to help others and ask nothing back in return. You have saved me repair expenses and time repairing the things I've been working on. That's why I do this. I just <clears throat> I'm a people person. I enjoy helping people fix their problems, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I can set up a account on my YouTube channel. I think it's called Patreon, where I can say, okay, I've helped you all send in five or 10 bucks. Whenever you see a video you like to help me finance this. What's to finance? I've got a $120 tablet I bought to sell stuff on YouTube to get rid of some of my junk I don't want. And that's how this all got started. I found out I can actually do videos on this thing and upload them. I can't do editing, so some of my videos, uh, especially the one where the big puff of smoke was coming out of this model, uh, were a little interesting. But one of you, you guys that don't know and haven't seen them videos, this snapper is powered by an electric motor, so it actually runs. And I have cut this apart so you can see inside the chain case. You can see inside the differential and how the planetary gear system works. And it all runs. Just turn the motor on. I use this for uh, answering emails where somebody will call in and say, Man, I, I just can't figure out what's wrong. Um, Something's bound up and I can't understand how it works. Well, I can show you on this model. This, this is why I built this, is 
just for this YouTube. I've cut a lot of stuff away. I cut all this out so you can see in to where the clutch disc hits the drive disc. And uh, you can see a little better how to adjust the drive disc off the bottom of the machine by the little paint stick tool that I uh, showed you how to make. If you want to pay me back for helping you out, all I ask you to do is that little word at the bottom that says subscribe, touch that. It doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't help me. Unless 250,000 of you people touch that word and I get probably 25 to 30,000 views on every video, I'm never going to make a dime off YouTube. I don't care if I do. I don't plan on that. That's not why I started this channel. Uh, the, the Jim's Fix-It Shop, the j &R Woodworking, the Gadget Corner that I do once in a while, it's just fun. I enjoy helping you guys. So uh, if <clears throat> I haven't answered all your questions, send me an email. I just broke over 400 emails. And uh, pictures, pictures, pictures. I love pictures. It's... It's hard for you to explain something to me on the phone or through an email without me actually seeing the problem. <clears throat> uh, model numbers and part numbers doesn't always help. Now this last guy we just did with the two springs, he actually took a picture of the mechanical breakdown of the machine that showed all the parts and he said, okay, number uh, 33 is broke and 26 is disconnected and I don't know where they go. That's great. That's just what we need. So I can actually see what you're talking about. Sometimes I can send you an email and describe what you need to do. If I can't, I'll, call, I'll email you and tell you, send me your phone number. I will call you. Do not put your phone number below the video in the description box because everybody that watches the videos can see your phone number. The phone numbers that I do find down there, I can erase what you put in that description box. No one else can. So, uh, I just kind of lost my train of thought there. I guess that's where editing comes in. God, I hate that. <laughs> so, if you need anything else done, if you have to have any questions answered, send me an email. And if it's if I feel it's too hard to try to explain to you over the phone, we're going to do a video and show you how to do it. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.